In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to match the color in your composite so that if you have a subject where it kind of looks a little bit off, the color of the subject is different from the background like this. I'm going to show you how to turn it into something like this where it matches and it balances a lot better. Well, folks, my name is Matt Glaskowski. Welcome to the latest tutorial. This tutorial is actually another bonus for my Photoshop compositing course. Um, so I've got actually two bonus videos for that course that are free to watch. There's actually downloads. Make sure you check the links in the description. Make sure you check below the video. You can grab everything that you need. Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead here and dive in. I think one of the, the biggest things that I see in composites is we place, we place something onto a different background and they don't fit then sometimes it's more the color temperature. It might not even be the lighting and the shadows, but it's the color temperature that doesn't fit between the two. So here we have a photo. This one's actually from Aaron Winters. Uh, his website's Aaron Winters Photography, a member of a Facebook group. And uh, I saw this photo and I thought this would be a great background replacement. And he was kind enough to let me use it. So I went ahead and made my selection here. And what you'll see is we have a nice warm background and we have a little bit of a colder tone on everything here up front. So what we want to do is we want to, we want to warm that up. We want to want that to match the background. I've got a few techniques that I'll use, but when it's just part of the photo, usually when it's just the subject or just the background, what I'll do is head up here to the adjustments panel and go to the photo filter adjustment layer and, uh, and we'll crank it up for now. We'll, we'll make it really, really, really warm here, but you'll notice it's happening to the whole photo. So the key to this is, You've already done the work at this point to select your subject from their background. They're usually on a layer that's going to be at some point in your layers panel. Since you've already done that work, let's use it. All you have to do is use the clipping group. And that's this little icon here in the properties panel. Just clip that down. And what it does is it clips that adjustment layer to only the layer right below it. So it's not going to apply to the whole photo. It's only going to apply to whatever layer is directly below. You'll see a little arrow in there that kind of points down and that's your cue. It's kind of pointing down at that layer. That's what it's being applied to. And so now we can double click on this adjustment and we can go in here and we can kind of finesse and fine tune and get that to fit a little bit better. Okay. So get, get in there, get a little bit warmth. And it's usually, there's some cooling filters in here too. What I usually find is, especially if the, if the problem is warming or cooling, this is usually where I go to, because that's probably one of the main problems I see is either the subjects too warm or the subjects too cold. And we need to, we need to help it match its environment a little bit better. All right. So there's one example of it. Uh, let's take a look at another one here. I've got a, uh, this is an elephant I photographed at the zoo. Uh, the background that I placed it in again, got a nice warm feeling. I like the warm feeling. I don't, don't want to change that. I also did something a little bit different here rather than, rather than fake the shadows. I actually included part of the background here. I included part of the ground so that we can use the real shadows from that were actually there instead of going in and, and faking them in Photoshop. You'll get, you'll get a lot better results that way in a composite. Problem is, is, is our, the whole thing has a different color temperature than the background that it's in. So we can go to the same tool for this. We're just going to use it a little bit more in a different way. Let's go ahead and open up our warming filter. I'm going to crank it up for now. And, um, and then again, we have to clip it to the layer that's right below. Cause right now it's being applied to the whole photo. So now it's being applied to only the elephant. And then what I do is I kind of, I'll tuck the, the, the panel aside so I can see it. What I'm really looking for is, is especially the ground. The ground's got a very kind of brownish, orangish feel in the original background here. Um, and then in the original elephant photo, it's got a very white type of a feel. So I'm going to adjust that density into where I can get it to fit. And if you didn't see it, take a look. That's before. And then that's after. So before and then after. So that to me, that helps kind of bring the two of those areas together a little bit. We could go with our mask and paint a little bit. I actually, I do like the fact that I brought some of that ground and some of that dirt in there. So I think those work well together and I could probably brush and finesse that. So they merge together a little bit, but to me, the color temperatures are way better. Now, the interesting thing that happens is, for this photo, I think the elephant gets a little bit too warm or yellow. 
All right. So what do I do? Because I like most of it, but the elephant again is, is, is a little bit too much for me. Well, we can just go to our brush tool, B for brush, set your foreground color to black, and then just take a low opacity brush. If I paint with hundred percent opacity, I'm essentially erasing that on the layer mask. I'm saying, Hey, get, get rid of it. I don't want it over here. That's too much. So if I paint with a really low opacity, I can do a couple of things. Number one, it's not going to be as much. Number two, it'll let me build it up. So I just go over here and paint a little bit. It's going to be subtle. And that's the key to this stuff, guys, is these things are all about subtleties. You're not usually going to see a night and day difference between something, but it's all of those little subtle things that when you add three or four subtle types of changes, um, it really helps bring the composite together. Okay, so that was before the photo filter adjustment and then that is after. All right, one more example. Uh, this, is, this is a fun one. This, is a, uh, this was a fun project that I had a really good time with um, in the compositing course. And whenever you're going to, whenever you're gonna take somebody and you're gonna put them onto a different background, not only are you gonna have color differences, but you're also going to have lighting differences. And one of the, this is only one of the techniques that I use, but it actually works really well with color as well. There's actually two things that we can do here. Um, one of them would be when I want to apply an overall toning to the photo, I want to bring everything together. There's an adjustment layer over here in the adjustments panel. It's called the color lookup tables. I very rarely break into my own videos. I actually recorded the whole thing and I thought it was important to, to put this in because to see how a LUT has its roots in video and, and that those roots actually make it work so well for compositing. So a, a lookup table or a LUT comes from color grading videos actually added really there for video. So if you were to imagine people that shoot video have lots of different video sources commercials, TV, movies, whatever, all those sources come together and they were recorded at different times and places. They use a lookup table or a LUT to color grade the video to give it a, a unification, to give it a common color theme. So when you think of that purpose and why those LUTs were created, that's why they tend to work so well for compositing because we're doing the same thing. We're bringing different footage, different photos into one scene, but we also want to make sure that we unify them together. Okay, so that's the end of my break into my own video back to whatever I was about to say. So I'll go over here and there's some really neat little types of, of color adjustments that we can go in here from, from, you know, a, a super, super bright and crazy to a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more toned down to even more toned down than that. So there's a lot of nice things that we can do. One of the key things that I find, is that as you start to apply these, these adjustments, they can change the whole photo. They can change the lighting, they can change the contrast, the highlights, the shadows. So remember, we're really after color here. We're after unifying the color. So after you've brought all your elements together, if you add a layer on top of it that's got an effect, if you change the blend mode to color, you're telling Photoshop, I just want to keep the color. I want to apply an overall color tone to everything that's under here. I don't want to mess with anything else. So it really comes in, uh, if you go up here, like um, edgy, amber, no, that's a horrible one, crisp warm. Uh, crisp warm is an interesting one because you can definitely see it'll make everything more contrasty. But if I change that to color, now I get an overall color tone to that. Again, I don't think that's the one I'd use here. I kind of like the, uh, the soft warming one. So one of the keys to those lookup table adjustment layers is change the blend mode to color. Cause remember, that's what you're after. You're unifying the color and those will do a really good job at it. Another thing that I do a lot is I will put a layer at the top of this. So command option shift and the letter E, and that would be control alt shift E on the PC, put a layer at the top. Head up here to the filter menu. We're gonna go down here to camera raw filter. If you're using one of the newer versions of Photoshop, the one that just came out in early April, 2018, you've got these color profiles, which are really good. There's a lot of nice creative and artistic ones in here um, as you go through. So those are a nice way. That's a really good one. Um, those are a nice way. That's a really good one too, um, to go in there and unify the color in your photos. So that's one option. The last option that I'll show you here is 
I will take the radio filter because there's two things that are going to be happening. I'm going to actually mix over into another part, which is lighting. We have placed two different photos on top of each other. They both, even though they might have the same lighting direction and we might have paid attention to all these things, they're still not a unified lighting source in the photo because you have two different photos. So I take the radio filter, bring the exposure up a little bit, bring the color temperature up a little bit, and then what I'll do is I will skim one of these filters from one of the lighting sources in the photo, wherever the, you know, in this case, the outdoors, wherever the sun happens to be. And I will kind of skim that across. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna be intense over here and then it skims across the photo. Now it's probably gonna be too bright, but we can go in here and we can finesse and adjust it a little bit, both the color and the exposure. And then by doing that, you now have this lighting source. You can kind of just move around your photo. And again, that is a, it's a unifying thing. We're taking, we've taken two photos that were separate and we're bringing one unifying thing into them to help tie them together. So that's another technique that kind of works with color because we're using color temperature, but it also works with exposure where you can bring a little bit of a, a lighting source in there as well. Well guys, I hope you will check out the Photoshop compositing course. Again, there's the, uh, the free bonus videos. You can find out more over at mackk.com slash compositing. And also make sure you check the links and uh, that'll have more information if you wanna go ahead and grab some files there to practice along with.